So today we're looking at container registries. And if you've ever used containers and you need to deploy containers for your application, you'll quickly realize that you need a container registry where you can store your container images so that your container hosting can pull those images down ready to run. So what we're gonna to do today is look at the container registries that are out there, the popular ones, look at the constraints, the costs, some parameters around what we're gonna to use to choose which container registry we should use. And I get that this is very subjective, so everyone has their own criteria, so you need to judge this on your own, but I'm gonna present you with mine and we'll see which one comes out on top. Welcome along to the channel and thanks for watching. And let's dive in and see if we can find a container registry that fits our purpose. So we need to come up with some criteria in order to pick which container registry we think is the best for us. So I'm only looking at container registries that support private repositories. I'm not interested in public repositories. If you want one of those, they all support public repositories and it's a totally different set of criteria for if you want something publicly exposed. There's a lot more free options out there if you're publicly exposing stuff. But private repositories is where the kind of small business and company type containers is where I'm focusing. So things that are not gonna be free potentially. I'm also focusing specifically on a small developer or a small team typically less than five developers, something like that, that might be working on a project that need to host some containers somewhere. And the key consideration for me is gonna be the price. So I'm trying to get to where this doesn't actually cost you anything, but we'll see whether that's achievable. And the functionality of the container registry is less relevant to me. All I want is somewhere I can store a container and pull it from so that I can deploy it. So for a typical spa application we have a front end and a back end so that's going to be two containers one for the front end and one for the api and if we take a rough guess so i looked at various container sizes and a vanilla nuxt or spa application is somewhere between 100 and 200 megabytes so allowing for a bit of growth in there and also a vanilla.net API is just over 200 megabytes. So averaging that across two containers for your front end and back end, if we allow 200 megabytes for each container, that's probably about right across both of those containers to give us a, a rough ballpark figure. And if we assume that we're going to do one commit per day to our source control, which would equate to one build per day, so that kind of gives us a metric around how many pushes and pulls we're going to do to this container repository. So as we've said, we've got one commit per day, which equates to one push per container per day. So that's a 400 megabyte transfer in into the container repository. And we're going to do one pull per container per day if that equates to one deployment. So a deployment per build if we're doing continuous integration, means that we're going to pull those containers out. So a 400 megabyte transfer out of the container registry as well. So these are things that we need to consider because they might impact the cost. So if we assume over a 30 day period, so for a month, that gives us 12 gigabytes. So 30 times 400 megabytes, 12 gigabytes of transfer in and 12 gigabytes of transfer out and just for ease of, of calculations, I'm assuming that one gigabyte is a thousand megabytes, not a thousand and twenty four. But you can do your own calculations around this to try and equate your own. But roughly 12 gigabytes in and out is what we're looking at per month. And so if we create a build every day, that means we've got potentially a different container version per day. So two containers. So that's 400 megabytes So two containers of storage that we need to hold per day. So across our 30 days, we've got 30 days of versions that we need to store would equate again to 12 gigabytes of storage that we need. This one we could probably cut down if we only want five days of version storage, we could trim that right down to maybe, you know, three, four gigabytes instead. So again, this comes back to how many days of version history you want to actually keep of your containers. You may not want any version one, you may just store the latest one always, in which case you only need 
the 400 megabytes of storage. So it's all very subjective, but I'm going to assume 12 gigabytes of version storage for calculation purposes. So let's jump in and look at the first container registry. And that is Azure, as Azure is my cloud provider of choice. I thought I'd look at the Azure Container Registry first. And Azure Container Registry starts at a fixed price per day of $0.167, so 16 cents per day. And that gives you 10 gigabytes of storage. So that almost gives us enough for our 30 days of storage. We'd have to trim that down slightly. But that equates to $5 per month. Well, $5 per month is not a huge cost. It's not free. So we're going to move on and look at the next option, which is Amazon. So the Amazon Elastic Container Registry. And again, storage here starts at 0.1 gigabytes per month. So they charge by storage, not by day. And they also have a transfer out that we would incur. So if we were hosting on Azure, but had our container registry in Amazon, we would incur a transfer out cost of 0.9 cents for every gigabyte. So our storage, if we're working on our 12 gigabytes, gives us 90 cents per month. And our transfer out cost gives us 81 cents per month. So it gives us a total monthly figure to achieve what we want to achieve of $1.71. So again, not a huge amount, but again, not free. So we're still incurring cost and overhead to our development that we might not want to. So let's keep looking. So Docker Hub. So Docker Hub allows us to have one private repository and this is on their free plan. So there's no cost for that private repository and they allow you to do 200 pulls every six hours. So they don't charge you anything for transfer in, transfer out, and anything for storage on that private repository, which is nice. So this could well be an option. And 200 pulls every six hours certainly hits our criteria if we're only doing one build and one deployment per day. But the downside with the Docker Hub is that it's really a repository for hosting a single container. So it only allows you to apply image tags for every container version that you push up. So their nomenclature that they have is the hub user and then your private repo name or registry name. And then every container you push up, you push up with a different tag. So that might be the time that you built it. So for us with our two containers, this doesn't really fit because we'd have to use the tag to indicate our different container names and then we have no option to version that container within that. So if we had front end as our tag and back end as our tag to indicate our two different containers, we've got no way to say that it's front end version one, version two, version three or latest. So that's not so useful, but this might work for you. So Docker Hub might give you some mileage for free. And of course, you could set up two accounts and be a bit cheeky, host each container in a different repository. But or different registry rather, but that's probably not where we want to go either. We want a single container registry where we can host all of our images because that just keeps everything nicely contained. So the next option we can look at is GitHub Packages. Now, GitHub Packages does have a free option, but its free option is limited to 500 megabytes of storage. So to utilize this, we really would have to only store a single image of each container, front end and back end, so that we keep that storage right down. You'd have to make that decision whether that's good enough for what you want. Really, I would want at least five to seven days of history so that if you've got any issues, you can go back a few versions and see what's changed, what broke and did it work previously and that kind of thing. So the lack of version history for me would be a deal breaker. And then we've got key.io not Quay, key.io, which is the Red Hat offering. And they don't have a free offering at all. So that starts at $15 per month. So that is by far and away the most expensive option out of the box. But as you're starting to increase usage, that may well become 
a more attractive option because the other ones become more expensive. The more you use them, the more images you store, the more data you transfer in and out. That can become an issue, whereas Key does have larger amounts of transfer in and transfer out and storage out of the box for that $15. So that could be a more attractive option depending on your criteria. So let's carry on. And the next one is the Google offering. So Google Artifact Registry. And again, they don't have a free offering. So they charge you very much similar to the Amazon approach, which is storage of 0.1 per month or 10 cents and only a 0.2 as opposed to 0.9, which Amazon charge you for transferring out. So it's a very similar calculation to look and see how this compares. So we keep the same in terms of storage of 90 cents per month, but we're only charged 18 cents per month for the transfer. So $1.08 in total, which again is a very insignificant figure, but not free. So that could potentially be a, a best option if we can't get to a free option. And then this is the last one that I'm gonna present, which is GitLab. So last but not least, and GitLab does have a free option, and they allow for five gigabytes of storage. So as opposed to the 500 megabytes of storage for GitHub packages, they do have a free option and they have a 10 gigabyte transfer out. So egress transfer on their free platform. And it is a proper container registry. So it's intended to store your containers for a repository, but you can set up a Git repository on there and it gives you a container registry alongside it and you can push as many containers with as many different names as you like and as many different tags with those as you like so it's a proper container registry so what you can do is just set yourself up a private repository in GitLab and call that my private repository and set up your container registry against that and push all of your containers to there and pull them from there for your deployments for the princely sum of absolutely nothing. So that fits for me. The only downside is obviously the five gigabytes of storage isn't gonna meet the 12 gigabytes of storage, but I can get approaching about 10 days of storage of images out of that. So it's certainly workable. It gives me images that I can store and go back to, maybe not a full month's worth, but it's not the end of the world. And in terms of the transfer, if you do hit the 10 gigabytes, so if we are doing that amount of transfer per month, then you may need to push down the amount of builds that you do to make sure that you do a nightly build once every other day or something like that to try and combat against that. So evaluating all of that, the winner for me that meets all of my criteria or at least most of my criteria or enough of it for it to be a workable option is the GitLab option. So the five gigabytes is certainly enough for me and the 10 gigabytes of transfer. So I'm gonna use GitLab as my container registry. So how do we set up a GitLab container registry? So I've signed up for GitLab here and I've got an existing container registry here, but we're just gonna go and create a new one. So you think of this like GitHub, what you're really doing is creating a Git repository. So let's go and create a new project in here, which will be a new Git repository essentially, but we're not gonna use the Git aspect of it. We're only gonna use the container registry. So let's create a blank project. So that's the URL that we get and we're gonna make it private because that's what we set out to achieve. Now that we've got that, we can come over to packages and registries and we see we've got this container registry option here. So if I come over to that, we can see that there's no images stored there at the moment, but it tries to help you and give you some commands. So it says you can do a Docker build and it tells you the name of the registry. So it's my test container registry on the end of your username, essentially, that you've signed up to GitLab with at registry.gitlab.com and the authentication you just log in using your authentication credentials that you log into the website with so what we can do is jump over to our ubuntu terminal and i do a docker image list we can see i've got a few here so what we'll do is we will re-tag one of our images so we'll do a docker tag Nuxt in a container and we'll copy that so that we get our registry and just change this around. 
So we get rid of Docker build and then end on the end in Nuxt in a container. So we get the same container name. So let's retag that. And then we can do, as it says on the website, so we can do a Docker login. And I've obviously done this before, but you will be prompted at this point to log in to registry.gitlab.com so that Docker can store those credentials. And then once we've logged in, we can Docker push that container that we created. So Docker push that container, and that pushes that up to our container registry. And now that that's finished, we can come over here, refresh this, and we can see our Nuxt inner container container, and it tells us our size. So our latest tagged version, which would be the default because we didn't give it a tag, is 41 megabytes in size. So that gives us plenty of headroom around the storage size. So your total storage size is at your account level. So if you set up multiple container registries across multiple repositories, all of these images across all of those repositories all count towards your five gigabytes of storage. So then in something like Azure, we could go and create a new app service or an Azure container app or something like that. So let's create an app service. And inside here, we can say that it's a Docker container. We can say that it's a Linux operating system container. And because we've said container, we get this Docker tab when we move over. So therefore over in here, we can say that image source is a private registry. And then in here, we can specify our URL, which would be HTTPS to our registry. GitLab, we can put in our credentials, we can put in our Nuxt3 image in a container and optionally a tag if we want to, so latest, so that it always pulls the latest one and any startup command that we need to actually start that container up. So it's quite easy once you've got your container registry to set up a web app that pulls that container down. Hopefully you found that useful and it's given you some food for thought about which container registry you want to use. But let me know in the comments which one you use. There may be one that I've not looked at. So let me know and let me know your criteria and whether you think this is a good option for you as well. Or if not, why not? Let me know in those comments. And with that, I need to thank my sponsors of the channel for supporting me. It does make a difference. It does help me out. So Thank you very much for that. And if you'd like to support the channel or you want access to any of the source control repositories, then the link is in the description below. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.